Hey guys, what's up? Brent Calmer back from Blue Water VST, and this is the fifth in our series on Native Instruments Reactors New School. In the prior four videos, we've covered the uh, sequencer and the sequencer controls up here, and now the fun will begin because we'll move down here to the sound engine and cover this uh, tone generator at left here, and in a, in a subsequent video, we'll cover the multi-effects unit. Now at the heart of new school sound shaping are two LFO, or sine wave LFOs that are kind of behind the scenes and those sine wave LFOs modulate a series of parameters that are listed here on the left. All right, so we have pitch, kick, frequency modulation, ring modulation, decay, and amplitude. Now you notice as I toggled through these, this display changed. And the reason why is that this display shows what each of these eight synthesizer tracks depicted by each of these eight colors how those synthesizer tracks are uh, are set for that particular parameter so for example for pitch this uh, this uh, leftmost synthesizer track is set up here to the top we can click and raise and lower this and what I've done for the purposes of illustration here is turned off all but one of these synthesizer tracks so we can get a sense for an individual sound and how that individual sound is being shaped. Now, uh, as a side note, when these are illuminated, this on-off switch below these synthesizer tracks, when those are illuminated, that means that that track is muted. So when we look at this here, what we see are, is that all but one of these synthesizer tracks is muted. Now I'm going to uh, hit play here and you can hear it hear how our starting sound comes off. Okay, it's very simple, it's kind of just a bassy sound. Now we have pitch selected over here in the parameter uh, selection menu. If I go down here to the one synthesizer track that we have activated and I click on the bar and raise it, you can hear the pitch is, is raising, and it's, it's going up. And likewise if I pull down that pitch down low, get more of a bassy sound. Now, right now, you're probably wondering, why, why until I just turned this off, were these moving rapidly up and down and, and why we have no movement over here? Great question. The reason why is that we are not currently modulating uh, the pitch parameter using those sine wave LFOs that I mentioned before. But now, if I, if I click play again, and I go over to this dot, to the to the left of the parameter and I click it now it's going to begin to modulate and you see the movement here represents that modulation you can see that the pitch is being very subtly modulated by those sine wave LFOs and uh, if we raise that it will still be modulated but within a different range right now it's a very subtle modulation And we can, we can raise and lower the rate, which will speed up or slow down that modulation here. And we can also get on a pitch and begin to change the range in which that pitch modulation occurs. Now, this pitch is a bipolar control. So what will happen is that you can tweak this. And after you get to a certain point, it starts to invert, right? It's a bipolar control. So you'll want to play around with that. Now you're wondering, this is starting to distract me, so I'm going to turn this down. Uh, maybe all the way down. What you're noticing here is that the modulation is happening within a very small range, and the reason why is that our, is that our depth setting is set very low. This depth uh, sets the depth of the modulation, in, in a sense, the intensity of the modulation that's occurring for these different parameters. So if we turn this all the way up, we're going to get a much deeper modulation. And you'll hear that. You hear that pitch, that pitch is all over the place. I'm going to lower that, lower that rate so the pitch will change more slowly. But that's just that one synthesizer track being modulated by this LFO. And it's, that LFO is raising and lowering the pitch at a certain rate. Now this phase control will change the phase of the LFO, of that sine wave LFO, so it has some sound shaping possibilities there. 
important to remember that all of these are global controls down here so these will these will apply to every one of the synthesizer tracks that you have activated uh, so likewise <laughs> this uh, frequency modulation is kind of a funny kind of a haunted house effect almost uh, will affect all of the different oscillators or all of the different synthesizers that you have active. So depending on how many of these you have, uh, this this will will affect all of them. Now drive is a is a saturation drive, which is pretty useful if you want to really add some grit to your sound. I'm going to turn this up. And, uh, and uh, decay is also a global control, as it says. It, controls the global decay amount. Now notice though for each of these for decay and for frequency modulation you also have a decay and a frequency modulation parameter for your individual synthesizer track so you want to you want to experiment to see what uh, you know how you want to balance those two sources of control but uh, there are a lot of possibilities here what I would encourage you to do is is just do kind of what we've done in this video which is mute all but one sound and play around and see how these different parameters how the modulation and alteration in the settings of these different parameters affect the sound and then you can start throwing more things into the mix because I think it's kind of confusing if you just you know these some of these snapshots are really involved and if you just have them go it can be hard to hear how each one of those sounds is being altered because you'll see over here that some of them are being modulated some of them are totally are not being modulated at all, and it's it's hard to pick out those individual effects. So you want to get in there, get in the sandbox, and root around, but but do the Occam's razor thing, or do the you know do a minimalism thing, and see if you can uh, can can see exactly how a single sound is being uh, is being altered. And in the next video, we will move over to the multi effects unit so, uh, section. Suffice it to say that it's basically it basically works on the same principle. So now that you understand this, you'll understand uh, how this multi-effects unit works as well. And then in a final video, we'll go through go through some real-world applications for this because until now it's it's very cool, it's very very involved. But you're probably wondering, well, how do I actually use this thing in my music? We'll get into that. We'll ch we'll check out some real-world applications and get you going with this. But thanks again for joining me, you guys. Uh, Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. Talk to you again soon.